So we have our final talk of the um, conference today. Well, we have a whole other day tomorrow, but yes. Our final talk is Nix in the Java Ecosystem by Fareed Zakira. I hope I'm saying her last name properly. Um, Java is one of the most popular languages. However, there is a fragmented and incomplete solution when it comes to tooling available by Nix packages. This talk is going to go over the current state of affairs, so you know what's available today in this situation, and what is so difficult about Java compared to other supported languages inside Nix packages. And there's also going to be um, greatly a proposed solution aimed at filling this gap. And just some information, hopefully, is not going to be embedded in the presentation about Fareed is he's deeply passionate about reproducibility, develop, developer tooling, and ergonomics. His prior experience has largely been centered around building public cloud infrastructure for AWS and Oracle. And he has over a decade of experience writing software, and is currently employed by Google. And I guess you could say it. Outside being a software um, engineer, he is a father and a wishful amateur surfer. OK, take it away, Fareed. My life? Can you guys hear me? Oh, I'm live. Oh, thanks. So thanks, everyone, for attending. Um, I'm, I can hear you. I'm presenting from OBS, so I'm gonna just continue. I think I'm live. Okay, I'm going to start. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I, I muted this thing. I was just presenting over OBS my audio. I'm going to start. Great. Um, thanks, everyone, for attending my talk. Uh, just to recap, my talk's going to be geared on Nix and specifically in the Java ecosystem. And I'm going to center it on Maven. The subtext for this talk is making Nix enterprise friendly. <clears throat> the sub subtext may be where all my Java peeps. Um, so, and I'm gonna show some slides with some code samples. I just wanna, I guess, apologize ahead of time for that. So I, I had a little nice introduction already. So we'll probably go really quickly through the slide. I'm free, it's Zakaria, that's okay, no worries. Uh, currently working at Google. Again, about a decade of experience probably nine of those 10 years on Java. Relative newcomer to Nix, I heard a great quote on the Discord channel, um, endless beginner, that I thought is quite apt, unfortunately. And the range of build support for Java code bases that the companies I've worked on have ranged from like off the shelf Maven and Gradle to highly custom proprietary build tools. And, you know, so I'm a pretty happy acolyte at the moment with Nix. It's a Pandora's box I've opened and uh, yeah. So the goals outlined of this talk are, I'm gonna describe why we should improve Java support, how other languages currently offer support in Nix, um, the main pattern or strategy, and kind of what's challenging with that in the Java ecosystem and you know, hopefully a goal of this talk is to empower you to use Nix for Java at your place of work and solicit more improvements and ideas. So maybe get people who are using Nix and Java out of the woodwork and let's collaborate some more. 
So why am I singling out Java specifically for enterprise? Well, Java to date remains a very popular programming language. Here's a snapshot of the top 10 languages by popularity of their Google searches. So Java, you know, as of 2020 is second, but up until recently it was number one for quite a while. And my subjective experience, however, is that Java remains one of the highest in demand languages for non windows based uh, enterprise shops, you know, building web services are Java's bread and butter. And so I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there to, to build upon. So I'm making the claim enterprise loves Java, um, you know, specifically non Microsoft shops, cause they have .NET, which is C sharp, kind of very similar. And in fact, Java's enterprise notoriety has made itself memeable with its overuse of design patterns. So the, this graphic here is just like a little excerpt from, and it's really funny, I put the link. I always, I don't know, gives me a chuckle. It's um, a really fun implementation of the FizzBuzz interview question. So if you're not familiar with FizzBuzz, the question says, just iterate from one to 15. And if it's divisible by three, output fizz. And if it's divisible by five, output buzz. And in classic Java fashion, it's overlaid with strategies and factories and patterns. Uh, it's, you know, so yeah. And the top there is like also a really fun class name that you get in Java a lot because of the overuse of patterns and strategies. So it's like factories of factories that are instances that are beans. So many languages nowadays have an accompanying tool to help manage and resolve dependencies. So pip, cargo, bundler, maven, cabal, npm. You know, dependencies are no longer vendored along with the source. And there's an expectation that you have some network connectivity to rehydrate those dependencies. Unfortunately, Nix, sand Nix build sandboxing disables network con connection, you know, for good reason to try and force reproducible builds. So, you know, what can we, what can be done here? And maybe, you know, the simplest Nix derivations shows that and that's fixed output derivations is the solution to this problem. Uh, the basic formula that many languages with support in Nix do is they take their custom lock you know, format, generate a Nix expression. So there's, this is the, the Nix language support, um, one step is here. So it takes the lock format file, generates a Nix expression. And then there's accompanying Nix support to take that Nix expression and use fetch URL to download all those dependencies and bundle them all together in a single Nix store entry with link farm. And ta-da, we have our vendor directory back. You know, this works because that Nix expression contains the SHA. So fetch URLs, um, allowed to proceed in the sandboxed environment. Okay, so I'll pretty, go pretty slow here. I, I'm, yeah, again, sorry, I, I know it's like a bummer to see code and text <laughs> in slides. So just to put it in perspective, here's the contents of a popular Nix tool for Ruby. Um, it's called Bundix. So on the left is my gem file lock. So that's your lock file that pins your transitive closure of your dependencies to specific versions. Bundex takes that on the right and generates a Nix expression or really anything native to Nix would work fine. So many tools use JSON. You can see here, it tells you where, where to download it from as well as the SHA, which is important for the fixed output derivation. Uh, what's not shown here is the call to generate the final Nix store entry, but I've included it here and you can see it's a link farm of all those downloaded dependencies. And with that, you can now pass it to your language of choice. In this case would be Ruby and you have your vendor directory essentially and all your dependencies. You know, what's really nice about this pattern is it's pretty granular. So because we're using Nix uh, link farm, all the dependencies have unique Nix store entries, so they're reusable. Um, and 
and because they're at a particular version, but it's somewhat pragmatic because it's a flattened tree. So it's, you're not getting the full um, transitive graph, which would be kind of neat so that you could use like Nick's, um, Nick's query, Nick's store query to, to see even your dependency tree from your language in the Nick store. But I think this is a good middle ground. Okay, so enter Maven. So Maven was released in 2004. So I think Nix is 20 years old. So um, not quite as old as Nix, but pretty old still, 16 years. It predates many lang you know, newer languages and package managers. And it has still a huge market share. I'd say Java is predominantly split between Gradle and Maven. I'm not really sure which one's the dominant one. Um, I, I, subjectively for me, it's been Maven. It does things different than what you might come to expect from more recent package managers. And I think the most important one is it does not generate a lock file, which is interesting. It relies on the fact that the algorithm with which it walks your dependency tree is stable and explicit. So the same versions are always resolved and it uses a nearest wins strategy. So as it's walking your graph, um, if you have a diamond dependency problem, so two different ver uh, dependencies depend on the same library, but at different versions, you know, during the nearest win strategy, whichever one it hits first is the one you're going to uh, resolve to. That's, I guess, kind of, you know, it, it's interesting because then it doesn't have to do any SAT solving to find correct versions that work within ranges. The problem, though, is now adding dependencies or even bumping anything or, or changing anything in your, your, close, your transitive closure can really change the graph and have reverberating changes to the dependency versions. And then there's the fact that Maven is, is closer to make rather than some of the other package management tools because it's, it's really generic and you can plug various plugins to do, to augment your build lifecycle in any sorts of way, uh, in any way. It's an XML. Uh, so it's quite verbose and kind of, challenging to also uh, work with. So like what are the ch challenges I see with Maven and Nix today and incorporating Maven into Nix? Well, for one, it it has some APIs externally to investigate the dependency closure. So, and this would be useful to, for writing a tool that generates the Nix expression or JSON, but it's somewhat restricted and actually a pretty incomplete. So, it has a rich uh, ability to generate plugins for itself and offers substantial flexibility there. However, any external tooling is lacking. The current API they offer lets you introspect, compile or runtime dependencies, but you excludes all those um, build time dependencies that are useful for plugins, which you still need to run Maven in a network isolated environment. And like I said, it's a pretty generic system. So really trying to capture a one, a really good one size fits all solution is challenging, especially since it's used a lot in the enterprise world, they're more likely to have some bespoke use cases where they're really doing, um, you know, interesting patterns. And I mean, I think that's also why it's so popular in enterprise because it can really do anything. Uh, Finally, there's some like anti-patterns that are really popular in Java that are kind of um, antithesis to how Nix wants to do things. So when you wanted to distribute a jar or your application, it was really popular to, to build what, you know, called a fat jar or Uber jar, which is, a, I think a good analogy would be a static binary. So you're bundling all your dependencies together in a zip, which is what a jar is. You just, you can't leverage then a lot of the granularity and cacheability of Nix uh, through the store. And finally, there's just not a lot of documentation or examples in Nix packages, you know, maybe likely because a lot of it's closed source and this is what my talk's geared at. So um, augmenting the documentation, showing what, how to do it today and getting people to contribute more openly. So I want to talk about two patterns of how to package Nix really quickly. Um, the first is the double invocation pattern. Actually, it's not really specific to Maven. You could use it with anything, but it's, it's quite useful here. 
I actually came across this pattern in a GitHub issue, which is somewhat, I guess, typical with how you come across solutions for problems at the moment in Nix. A lot of Googling and reading through GitHub issues. You run your full build, which would be this top part here. I mean, this whole derivation is running the first build once. And I'm Maven repo local is where it's going to be uh, building out the, the cache dependencies locally. And I'm setting that into my Nix store. There's a little cleanup phase here in the install where I'm just removing um, things that help to keep the output hash more consistent. Um, so like timestamps and files that Maven wants to generate. And it's double invocation. So you run this once, you kind of fix up your output hash. Uh, so you put a fake output hash to start, tells you the output hash you expect. And now um, the output of this derivation, I could then feed into a subsequent Maven build and tell it to work in offline mode. So I could use this Nick store path to basically rehydrate a subsequent build. You know, surprisingly, this, this isn't bad and it works in practice pretty not bad. However, um, you know, due to the lack of a real lock file and ways some people choose to structure their Maven application, so using version ranges or unfortunately the use of snapshot, uh, which is a special, special type of development copy. <clears throat> so it's not pinned to an exact version. You really run into the problem where the output hash is not reproducible. So submitting this into something like Nix packages may not be optimal because it, it's, it might get out of date and be unbuildable pretty quickly. Finally, it's not very granular as it's downloading all the dependencies within a single Nix store entry. So subsequent rebuilds of this derivation have to essentially redownload always all your dependencies all over again. Um, and you have these pretty coarse uh, uh, store entries. So here's actually using the previous Nix build invocation, um, previous derivation. So here I actually set the repository, which would be a, a variable set to the previous derivation. And what's important here is I'm telling it to run an offline mode. And yeah, we're off to the races there. So there, there is actually some, you know, air quotes here, official support in Bill Ma Maven, uh, language support uh, for Maven index packages. And it's called Build Maven. It relies on a, a Maven to Nix plugin, which I've included here as the source, uh, link to the GitHub repo. Put it quote unquote official because, and what spurred this talk is there's very little um, recent activity. So the last commit was 2017. And, and I think there's some improvements to be made that I'm submitting as well as, you know, lack of documentation, but it, it tries to fit in this pattern that we see other tools doing and language support. So it does generate a lock file and it uses the link form pattern, but it, it only goes as far as actually generating a jar. So, uh, which is your library. But if you're a service author or an app author, you know, you want to get to a runnable artifact. Okay. Sorry. We'll go through this really quickly. So maybe just to show how intricate Maven is, I have a screenshot here. Um, the POM XML, this is like uh, package JSON or something similar in other languages. This is how you define a, a project. This is like the most empty project you can write. I just have the name of my project, no dependencies, nothing. Um, I then take this and use Maven to Nix that plugin to generate uh, the lock file, which they called project info.json. And what, what I thought was great and what Nix is great is making you hyper aware of the dependencies you need to build that were so implicit. So just an empty project here has 257 jars and 640, you know, items essentially in my Nix store. So some other metadata, like that was kind of eye opening for me, like uh, what you need to just start off with a empty project. Kind of the bottom photo here shows that link farm it's building. So it's, oh, how do I get rid of that? Ah. It's still following the, the pattern of other language tools. So it's still kind of flattened and pragmatic. It's just one level deep tree. This is like a pretty good pattern I wanted to share. So if we wanted to make the jar actually runnable, um, it's pretty easy to do this. So in Maven, you jars can self describe their class path, which is 
uh, very similar to like wh where they load their libraries from within the jar itself. And Maven, you can augment it with a plugin to, to, to modify that file and, and dictate the dependencies. So all you need to do here is put a little snippet like this, where we're saying add the class path for all the dependencies in my project. The prefix is going to be lib relative to where the jar is, which is great because we want it relative to the next, because it's going to be in the next store. And the layout type is actually repository, which is also great because that's the Maven repository layout format, which we have, which we had already built to actually even build the jar in the first place. So all I do is you take that repository and you link it into lib and copy your jar out and I make a little wrapper <clears throat> to run it. So you don't even have to, you can just run a little uh, script that starts up your jar and it loads up all your class path and you're, you're in business. I guess the, the little downside at the moment here is I've added quite a lot more than I need to, to my class path. So I've added all the libraries I need to actually build the jar. So you, there's some improvements here to, to slim down the repository down to just what you need for, um, runtime. So kind of looking forward, I want to love to meet and contribute with others working on Nix and Java. Um, I, I showed earlier how popular Java is. So it's surprising to, to hear so little of the community. I mean, I think Nix is great in having a really vibrant Haskell community and some other uh, languages. So I'd love to see something align more with how popular Java is. This is kind of just the surface and I'm only covered Maven, but the Java ecosystem, or I guess JVM based languages are pretty fragmented. So there's Gradle, um, SBT for Scala, uh, Lanigan for Clojure. So what's a way to build a really cohesive story around all these tools that work together? I mean, because fundamentally they're building jars and uh, they run the same way. I think there's an interesting opportunity to also build patterns that use JLink. So that's actually a tool that rather than having to distribute the whole runtime for Java, it builds a small runtime image, a uh, native image, which would be pretty cool. And, you know, help me out and um, look for other contributors. I'm adding language support documentation for Maven and Nix packages. And I, you know, we'll continue to help improve the, the story here. And I just, uh, so that's my talk. And I just wanted to thank, you know, the Nix community, um, the Nix Con committee for kind of making all this possible. Thank you. You are very, I am, I definitely appreciate that. Okay, it doesn't seem that we have, um, we have at least one question for you. Um, okay, the first question will be, I'm getting a really bad feedback. Very disorienting. I'm sorry. I will try to make do. Hi. Okay, it's from Nix Nut. Um, any experience with Gradle and Nix? I guess this is a question. I, I haven't yet. I was looking into it to try as I'm adding documentation, and I, I actually see that Gradle has a a plugin to generate a lock file which I, I was making the claim na Maven doesn't uh, natively. So I actually think the, the story here will be much better. Um, but it's there's the second half. So there's building your Maven repository because that's what all these JVM tools still use. doesn't matter what the, the top tool is. Many of them rely on the Maven repository layout and um, like kind of federated way to distribute packages. So unifying that like final piece of building the jar and runnable is what I'm interested in as well. Uh, 
Okay, I'm sorry. The feedback I was getting um is no longer there, so um <laughs> I can pick up again. It was like being disoriented. I'm very sorry about that. So I don't believe we have any more questions for for you. So thank you for your talk very very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Appreciate. It.